My name is Jason Chu. I'm a rapper, poet, and Christian. This is five conversations between me and my friends, between artists, between believers, between Asian Americans. It's about what we make, where we come from, and how we live. This is Beyond Belief. Hey, hey. stay chill. She is super duper fly, deeper than a scuba dive, a demon who can move the sky, an angel with a halo and some boots and You know, whenever people are like, oh, hip hop's a negative culture, blah, blah, blah. Like, my favorite quote is, uh, you know, most deaf on black on both sides, right? He says, hip hop's not some giant living in the mountains, hip hop is us. If we're doing good, hip hop's doing good. If we're doing evil, hip hop's doing evil. I know you're rapping now, you've got uh, musical projects coming out, but you're primarily known right now as national champion, slam poet, like, you know, that dude on the scene. What was your first contact with poetry specifically? With poetry, I was like downloading music on LimeWire and stuff. I came across this Black Ice thing. It was actually an audio recording of Deaf Poetry Jam. And I was just like blown away because it was like had this hip hop foundation, uh, but there was crowd reaction and it was acapella and there was no beat. And I was just like blown, it was incredible. And I was like writing poetry and I remember me and my homie had a group and I was the cause and he was the effect and we were called Karma. <laughs> <laughs> so, super, like, so good hearted, but like pretty cheesy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But then I was like, yo, poetry's kind of corny. I want to keep rapping. I want to be an MC. And, and, you know, when I was 17, I got kicked out of high school too. Um, and so I was, you know, selling hella weed and, and just kicking in with the wrong folks. I had big issues with authority, feeling lost and feeling like your life is not going the way you're supposed to. And like realizing that this is because of causes you've made in your life. Uh, realizing that I think I had to take ownership over over my life and the decisions that I've made. And the SGI and Nietzsche and Buddhism, human revolution is a really big aspect. You know, the kind of Buddhism I practice, it's not like sit around and wait for things to, like it's you, you make the cause in your life to change your life. And so when I was 17 was when I first stood up and I first like made this vow to, to dedicate my life towards like world peace. Um, and so, you know, poetry, man, it's like it expounds on the human condition. It gave me this outlet to be able to tell my story the way I wanted to tell it, and it allowed me to still be hip hop and still rhyme and still have an audience. Yeah, blink once and it's all gone. Nobody to fall on whenever you fall off the throne that you bought from the devil, the dark side, and blame on the art form. What if so I come from Durham, North Carolina, born and raised. You know, growing up Buddhist in the South was like interesting just because. I'm already different enough being an Asian dude, and then I'm that Asian guy chanting and like has an altar in his crib and like doesn't believe in God. My pops had heavy hands, just Japanese, traditional Japanese dude, like suppressed anger and emotions. Yeah. <laughs> just, and I was just kind of a true American kid that I think he didn't understand where I was coming from a lot of times. And a lot of times instead of hitting me, he'd make me chant for hours. So I would have to chant for just hours upon hours and hours. I just got, I went to school with like kind of marked up uh, and it was like immediate like social services type deal and I didn't see my pops for months. I know it's like a heavy fact to just drop in the middle of an interview. Yeah, yeah. But I was in, I remember in foster care, I remember it was spent a lot of time by myself and I was listening to like Pac and Big's greatest hits. After I got out of foster care, my pops was diagnosed with cancer. And so after that whole process, my dad never, forced me to chant, never made me chant, never kind of really did his own human revolution and changed his own tendency with anger. And so that's why from like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I was just really suffering, really lost. It was really tough for me to find a spiritual grounding because like I related chanting to punishment my whole mm. life. And so every time I looked at the altar, I, I just had this, you know, resenting attitude towards it. Dude, that's actually uh, really fascinating, man, because uh, I grew up Christian. Uh, and I am Christian now, but it's so funny because it was like a very identical journey, man. Like there's these Bible verses that talk about like, oh, disciplining children and all that. And so they'd spank us and, and they tie it to religion. And so in the exact same way, for a long time, especially in high school, I really resented like God and religion and Christianity. I, I feel like for me, a lot of the last 10 years has been individuation, you know, like realizing like, okay, it's not just my parents or even you know necessarily my church saying like oh this is what christianity is it's like me discovering my relationship with god 
One of the biggest things I hate about religion is like the hierarchy that gets and the like savior complex. Y'all ain't, do, you know what I'm saying? Y'all aren't, you ain't, you know, you need to. You know, it's like y'all. Right, it's, it's like instead of, instead of freeing people, instead of helping people change their life, it actually is saying like, it, it can be very enslaving. Uh, and it sounds like a lot of what you take out of Buddhism is it's a lot of self-actualization. It's a lot of like, I'm gonna like take my life, my destiny into my hands. What's so unique about, I think, my experience with Buddhism is that I came up in the SGI and Nichiren Buddhism, which is, I think, very different from other sects of Buddhism. I've always grew up chanting, which is, I think, a real vigorous, like, it's like win or lose, man. You know, it's actually super gangster, yo. and it's not about ritual to me. Uh, do you see yourself as a Buddhist first uh, or an artist first? A Buddha is someone who has awakened to their mission of their purpose in this in this realm of, of life, which is to, I think, awaken others to Buddhahood too. And I think my art, as an artist, that's my personal vein and like vessel for, I think that's, that's my unique purpose here. Art is kind of the visible manifestation of, I think, conversations we have with ourselves. And that's why it's interesting. I think art and, and anything you feel like you have a mission for is a spiritual process, man. You have to tap into something spiritually in order to work out that much, in order to practice your shot that many times, in, in order to read this book four times to learn this medical term, in order, to, in order for you to understand your potential, you need to tap into something divine, man. You need to tap into something greater than yourself. And I think that's where religion comes in, in people's unique ways. And that's why I'm a firm believer in, in all faiths and the way that they, they bring out the goodness of, of people's hearts. It's taught of cause and effect, how it is the ultimate truth that everything relies on, how a thought will turn to word as quickly as fuel becomes fire, whether it's for burning down a house or for keeping a lover warm, the spark of an idea will always match the fuming language we decide to pour out of our mouths, but I forgot that the voice does the work of the Buddha, so why would I ever call someone gay before calling them beautiful? Why would I not praise the person that drinks the same water as me? Why would I lift my voice just to put someone else down? You see, us humans, we have a habit of overpowering and taking what doesn't belong to us, but I pray that we are making our way towards the moment when our tongues are the only thing left for us to conquer. And if there's one thing I've learned about being a poet, is that it's not about what you have to say in your poem, it's about what you have to say when your poem is done. Hey NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.